Hey guys, it's day 71 and I'm back. I almost didn't make it though. Between day 60 to 70 was quite turbulent. I got back into my bad habits of smoking weed and eating too much junk food. And overall, I wasn't thinking too positively. So today I wanted to talk about addiction and identity and why it's necessary for you to reframe identity in order for you to get out of your addictions. See, I started using cannabis when I was 15 and it developed into a daily habit by the time I was 16. I didn't see it as much of a big problem back in the day, but then in my latter half of my high school years and early into university, I realized that it was starting to become an issue. And it was taking up a lot of my time, a lot of my money, a lot of my energy, and I developed an identity around it. I became a stoner. So I had stoner friends, I did stoner things, I had stoner ideas, and we all know what those ideas are like. And after I started realizing that I probably wanted to cut back or quit, being a stoner got in the way of that. See, when you have an identity around something, it's like you're killing yourself. You're killing part of yourself if you all of a sudden were to drop that identity. If you don't have anything to replace it with, quitting the thing that your identi identity is uh, centered around is going to be really difficult. Think of somebody who is on a weight loss journey and they look in the mirror and they call themselves fat. They identify as fat. Are they really fat though? Like, yeah, their bodies are fat, but are we our bodies? You know, our bodies are part of who we are. But if you, you know, think of the capital self, the capital S-E-L-F, that is not your thoughts, that is not your body, that is something greater, more ethereal. And so, in the same way, Peter Horvath might not really be a stoner. Just the same way that I mean, yeah, we call him a human being, and the, this is his avatar, but he is connected to a greater self, just like any one of us here. And so, it's important for you to realize that you are not your thoughts, you are not your body. And what that does is it gives you this unique opportunity, this perspective, this permission to step outside the box that you're in, to step outside the framework of your current identity and to change things around. You are not limited to your current identity. And in doing so, that's what's gonna create the conditions for you to step beyond your addiction and create a new reality for yourself. It wasn't until I stopped wanting to identify as a stoner that I was sort of allowed to stop smoking weed. It's like I was turning my back on part of who I was as a person if I had continued, if I had stopped smoking weed but continued to be a stoner. So if you want to lose weight and you look in the mirror and you're fat, at what point are you skinny? Are we looking at some sort of objective measure like BMI? Well, those, those metrics aren't always accurate. See, it's not whether you're fat or skinny when you look at yourself in the mirror, because there's so many other behaviors that go into play in determining whether somebody's fat or not, or whether somebody's a stoner or not. So it's not necessarily how much weed you smoke during the day, during the weekends, that ultimately, ultimately determines whether you're a stoner. It's not how much food you eat that determines whether or not you're fat. It's a multitude of factors. It's the people that you hang around with, the thoughts that you have, the behaviors that you engage in. And all of those things together are basically your identity. Your identity is an operating system from which patterns of thoughts emerge. Those patterns of thoughts over time create consistent realities for you. So if you want to change your reality, you have to change your thought patterns, which in turn change your identity. So at first, what you have to be okay with 
is letting go of your current identity and realizing that maybe it's not working for you. So essentially, for example, for me, I don't smoke that much weed anymore. For, for, for example, between day 60 to 70, and even earlier in this video series, I had a, a little bit of trouble. I got into a little bit of trouble and I kind of lost sight of the identity, of the new identity that I'm trying to create for myself. And I got back into my bad habits. Because, see, those old identities, the memory, the, the, the neural networks are still there and they're, they're ready to go. It takes a long time for that stuff to die out. Old habits die hard. And so that's something I had to struggle with, you know, like, but ultimately this new identity that I'm creating for myself, that I'm, that I'm trying to, this project, the momentum was powerful enough that I realized that that old identity isn't who I wanted to be anymore. So both times that I got back into smoking weed and eating junk food, this video project is what gave me the purpose, saved me from that sort of pit of nihilism, of meaninglessness. And I just want to let you guys know that we all are struggling with different addictions. Anyways, I think I can confidently say that I'm not really interested in being a stoner anymore. I'm not really interested in binging out on junk food and getting a puffy face and sleeping in. I feel like I'm finally dissolving in that cocoon and I'm about ready to become a butterfly.